northern lad with a pudding bowl haircut, <laughs> dressed smartly in a yellow and white hoop t-shirt and a tight yellow short combination. Imagine next a far more worldly Welsh boy with a pudding bowl haircut, clad uniquely in a yellow and white hoop t-shirt and in tight yellow polyester short, carrying a leaf. Both boys sit on bikes. One looking for an innocent bit of holiday fun on the tranquil roads of rural Wales. The other, looking for nothing less than the total annihilation of his polyester-clad nemesis. I can still hear, I can still hear Clifford's immortal words ringing in my ears. I'm quoting. In Wales, we are allied to cycle on either side of the road. The twisted grin, the strange deep laugh, none of these telltale signs registered in the heart of this naive, trusting Cumbrian lad. Needless to say, with Cliff's words of encouragement still ringing in my ears, I hurtled straight down the nearest hill on the wrong side of the road and cycled at full speed straight onto the bonnet of an oncoming Jaguar. Now, as I flew through the air, like some unwelcome English ragdoll, I'm sure I can still see in my mind's eye today Cliff's gleeful face watching my inevitable demise from the safety of his own grassy knoll. <laughs> But, give him his due, he soon confessed. At some deep level, he was aware that what he had done was wrong. I'm quoting. Robin's fallen off his bike! <laughs> he reported to his and to my mum. Accurate, but not really the whole story. He hit a car! Another pause of several minutes before this. He's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> Only then, on his third attempt at confession, could Cliff begin to accept that what he had done, and worst of all, the monster he had become, was so deeply wrong. Uh. Now, I survived. Thanks in part to the speedy reaction of Roz, Cliff's mum. Roz, only too aware of what her son was capable of, had trained as a doctor for precisely this moment. And thank you, Roz. But mainly, I survived thanks to my enormous pudding bowl hair, which gave my head, as it slammed against the pavement, more protection than a Formula One driver's helmet. Clifford's letter to me in the weeks after my release from intensive care said simply this Dear Robin I'm glad you are not dead <laughs> Love, Clifford <laughs> Like me, I'm sure you can feel the chilling evil irony in every word he wrote or was he perhaps forced by Ross to pick up a pen and at least mimic normal human emotion I'll let you decide but I know that it was the last ever letter that he sent me. <laughs> and the underlying threat of his final words, you are not dead, <laughs> still wakes me up in a cold sweat on every single anniversary of that fateful day in Van Vacus. So, I mentioned that Clifford and I are more than cousins. I use the phrase double cousins, doppel cousins, if you will. The phrase suggests some sort of mirror image, one person in two bodies, but no, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Cliff and I are different, we're totally different from one another, and I will prove it. I married a girl from the centre of France, but just off to the right of it, from near a town called St Etienne. Clifford has found a very different girl, a girl from the centre of France, but slightly to the left. <laughs> totally different. You don't think so? Well, let me explain this. Sylvie comes from Poitiers. Poitiers has a resident population of 91,400 <laughs> compared to St Etienne's impressive 178,500. Now, I grant you, both towns have an active tramway system, both towns have universities, but St Etienne had an industrial heritage post-war based largely around the company Manu France. In Poitiers, it was Michelin. <laughs> Two towns of a totally different urban structure, I'm sure you'll agree. And these were the origins of our wives, but the differences go on. So, I married a French girl called Sylviane. 
<laughs> Once again, Clifford showed independence of thought and eventually, eventually, 25 years later, independence of action. Clifford, he had 25 years to think of this, rejected both the letter A and the letter A, like some sort of evil Sesame Street character. He chose a girl named quite simply Sylvie, not Sylvie-Anne, Sylvie, to be his wife. Whereas Sylvie is born on November the 5th and is a Scorpio, my wife, Sylvie-Anne, was born on November the 13th. Yeah, yes, yes, she's a Scorpio as well. But potentially, they have a different ascending planet. And as any astrologer will tell you, this can, in some unusual cases, create marginally different personality types. Whereas my wife has deep chestnut-coloured hair, Clifford went for someone with more of a, a hazelnut twin. <laughs> Whereas I live with my wife in South West London, here again, Clifford diverged and chose South East London as the base for his continuing quest for uniqueness and independence. But the most chilling similarities of all only became aware to me yesterday evening. <coughs> Sylvie's sister and brother are with us tonight. Valerie, Catherine and Emmanuel, thank you for joining us this evening. A round of applause, please. You, would it surprise you to learn, I'm not lying, that my wife's siblings are called Valerie, Catherine, but there is a difference, and it's the differences I'm interested in. Whereas Sylvie has a brother called Emmanuel, my brother-in-law is called Samuel. Completely different. Really, the differences between us could not be more stark. So, I'm feeling emotional. Any suggestion, any suggestion that Clifford is just a copycat, that he should stop following me around, and that he should sod off back to his own country and live his own life, well, they're sadly missing the point. I, for one, would never say that. I would go even further. If Cliff continues to follow the clear rules of his restraining order, I am now comfortable for him to live within the stipulated 20 mile radius of my home. It is perhaps finally time for me to forgive, even if I can't forget, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So, Clifford, thank you. So, I'm almost done, please don't worry. So, on behalf, firstly, of my parents' generation, Ros, I would like to congratulate Clifford first and foremost for marrying outside of his own and my own family. <laughs> <laughs> it's no mean feat. I would also like, like to thank him for marrying, nevertheless, within his own species. For the French and the British are not that different. We're not Venus and Mars. We're bound by something much, much deeper than our deep love of cheese that I'm sure we'll be demonstrating in a few minutes. <laughs> so please, first an almost final toast, a toast to Clifford for choosing a wife from a different region of France, one with a totally different name from mine, a slightly different hair shape, slightly different siblings, and for keeping me away from, and keeping, keeping strictly in line with the terms of his ASBO. So please join me in a toast for Clifford. Thank you, Clifford. circle. Back to Sylvie. <laughs> so Sylvie, here, laid before you is the man you have married. I am so, so sorry that so much of Clifford's dark inner passages have been hidden from you until now. But now we must all let the light enter those gloomy places and find in our hearts a way to celebrate a man who, despite all that life has thrown at him, has emerged from his glistening chrysalis and blossomed, well, if not into a butterfly, at least into one of those moths with dark, <laughs> flappy, dusky wings. <laughs> Here we are in 2014. We know that Cliff and Sylvie have already come a long, long way together. 
They now have a fully functioning kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and Cliff still has most of his own teeth. I'm sure he'll join me. <laughs> One last time, wish them all well. So please raise your glasses to, to Cliffy, to Cliff, to Sylvie, and of course, to their kitchen. To their kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. One very, very, very final thought. As you try to find some vestige of peace tonight when you go to bed, please try to ignore 90% of what I've told you here today about Cliff. There is a very good chance, probably more than 50%, that the strange noises you might hear outside your bedroom, the scratching, the groans, the grunts, the high-pitched giggles, this might not be Cliff. But just in case, I would simply suggest that you lock your door very firmly <laughs> and pray, pray for morning to come. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. <laughs>